Good morning to those that are watching online and welcome. Let us know that you're there if you would. And uh, sorry it took us a minute to get to this point, but we're here and we're ready now. And, and I want to share announcements this morning with everybody. Now, tonight we will not have a regular in-person service. Uh, there's some football game going on or something, I guess. But, but um, uh, anyway, we're uh, you know, representing right there Christian Okoye, one of the greatest all-time in, uh, in Chiefs history. But um, anyway, we, um, we're, we're looking forward to a good time at halftime tonight. Now, it's, you know, play it by ear. And I'm going to give it probably, once I get started, I'll probably do like a five-minute or less countdown so that you can join and get on there. Um, since it's kind of a fluid thing, I don't know what time it'll start or what time halftime we'll get to. I don't know how long it'll take the Chiefs to get a big lead in the first half yet, so it's hard to say. But um, anyway, we're, we're counting on a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff I'm speaking by faith. Now, see, I'm not as bad as one, one friend of mine. I say bad. It's good. I think it's good. Uh, he posted on his Facebook page for his church a, a, a Chiefs deal, said that if you want to come at 10 o'clock this morning and pray for the Chiefs' victory, then be here. If you want to pray for the, for the Buccaneers' victory, we'll be here tomorrow at 10. Tomorrow at 10. And, uh, you know, so, so I thought that was pretty clever. That's pretty good stuff. But anyway, so tonight at halftime, I will be, I'm going to come up here, and I'll be here and do it all live right here. And uh, my subject tonight is victory. And if we're having victory, it'll say like it is. If we're not having victory, we may talk about adversity. But either way, we're talking, we're talking good stuff about Jesus at halftime tonight. It's going to be a good time, the Lord. Uh, Wednesday night, we should be here. If we're not, we'll let you know on Facebook and probably an email as soon as we know. It's going to be super cold. The weather should, surely all the snow is not going anywhere, but it should be where we can get here. If we got here this morning, we can get here Wednesday probably. Bitter, bitter cold temperatures is the thing that might concern us if the wind's blowing, stuff like that. Uh, but if all possible, we're probably going to have church. But the good news is, even if we don't have it here, we can have it online. And I, I'm, that, that blesses me. I tell you, it just, that's, a, that's such a thing that I wish we'd have been doing. I wish I'd have set this up a long time ago and, and, had, and had made this decision. But uh, next Sunday is Mission Sunday. Today's BGMC, so if, you, if you're home and got BGMC offering, don't forget to bring it with you when you come next week. Um, but uh, next weekend is missions offering, and then um, two weeks from today on the 21st, our plan is to have our annual business meeting. It'll follow the morning service. Shouldn't take too terribly long. We'll look at the finances. We don't have anything to vote on or anything like that. Um, so we'll just look at our finances, answer any questions, visit a little bit, talk about a couple things, and then we should be, uh, should be out here fairly quickly. So on the 21st, need all of our members to be here if at all possible on the 21st and um, should always be here but that Sunday we need you for a business meeting so um, those are the announcements that we feel like we need to make this morning I encourage you to continue to be faithful in tithes and offerings the box is there in the, in the middle of the room here if you need to send them in there's an address on the Facebook page or you can let me know what you know and give me your give me information I'll let you know the address that way so but we are glad to be together this morning and glad to be in the house of the Lord with those that are here and those that are online with us thank you for joining us and uh, let's worship God together before we get to our word this morning. Stand if you want to stand, sit if you want to sit, but let's worship God. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just upon his promise just to know the saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust Trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, and in simple faith to plunge beneath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. 
Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust I am who you say I am, who the sun sets free, oh it's free in me, I'm a child of God, yes I am, my father's house, there's a place I'm a child of God, yes I am, 
I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place. Father God, in the name of Jesus today, we honor you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence among us. We believe you to speak life, peace, and strength to every heart, every life, every body, every mind, every circumstance, Lord God, is before you today in this room and those that are with us on the, on the, uh, the internet. Father God, speak your victory, speak your encouragement and your strength, and let your word come forth in a powerful, in a powerful way this morning. Use me, God, as a vessel of honor for you. Speak life, peace, and strength through me and to me today. We ask you to touch us and to bless us. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Praise God. It is good to be together in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, glad that you are here. Hope that you made it safely and didn't have any issues. And hope you get home the same way. And for those that didn't come, we understand. There's times that you just feel like it's just better to stay, stay put, and that's okay. And uh, we hope that you're safe, well, and blessed. And Again, if you weren't with me a minute ago, I encourage you to join us tonight at halftime. I know it's going to be kind of fluid the way it's going to be done, but uh, I will come here um, a little before halftime. I'll actually start kind of like I do now. There will be like a screen on there that says that we'll be live in a few minutes. Um, I'll do that at somewhere close to the time that it goes to halftime, and I'll give it a couple of minutes just because there's, there's going to be a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of fluctuation there, so we don't know exactly what time it'll be halftime. I'm guessing 6.45, somewhere in there, even closer to 7. I don't ever pay attention when we've when we done it in person where we're gathered together. And I'll tell you again, I really, we talked about, we really wanted to get together tonight with those that like to do that and have food and fellowship and, and uh, football and, and all that, you know, like we've done in the past. But we just felt like if, if we did that and one person gets sick, it's, it's, we'd have to live with that. And I don't. Um, you know, we're, we're, still, we're still a little nervous about having church, to be honest about it, at times. But um, numbers this week, praise God, numbers are down. Friday, we only had 10 active cases in the whole county. That is wonderful. Um, that's the lowest we've had um, where they've reported the numbers in a while. And uh, people are starting to get their shots and get all that done. And, and uh, so we're, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting to that place where we can maybe take a breath pretty soon, I hope. I still, I'm going to wait probably until the 21st. To, we can talk about it and decide what we'll do with fellowship this month. I'd like to have fellowship this month like we, like we want to do, but we also want to be wise and we're not going to do something, that, again, that's going to cause us to have problems. So um, that's that. Open hands. Open hands is our, is our subject, and this is going to be our ongoing uh, word for the month of February. You know, the last Sunday this month, we have a missionary that's going to be with us. His name is uh, Ronnie Rice, and uh, they will be with us on the last Sunday of the month. Hadn't had a missionary in a while. Um, the times I had missionaries scheduled over the last months, uh, something got in the way, COVID got us or what have you, and uh, so we will have a missionary this month on the last Sunday of this month uh, on the 28th, and looking forward to, to hearing from, from their heart about what, what God is doing with them, and uh, praise God for that. So open, open hands. Now, I want to lead into this a little bit. We're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, one verse, and then we're going to be we're gonna go through some, some scripture here this morning. Uh, like I generally do, but I want you to think with me this morning about open hands. Uh, we're talking about this, we are subject, next week will be open hearts, will be a subtitle for it, and then we're going to talk about open hands in worship uh, the following week. So, so I've, got, I've got, a, got a theme going here, the Lord hit me with this probably about three weeks ago, and, and I knew this is where we'd be going here for February, but the, the thing about open hands, now, now this is something I've read and seen, and, and I've heard enough places, and, and you know, talking about why do we do certain things we do? Like handshaking. Now, right now with the current, 
current atmosphere, handshaking is not quite as common. Some folks don't. We fist bump, we do something. But this is something I heard when I first heard it, I thought it made sense, and I've actually heard it other places. But And I like to watch, I don't know if you care anything about the old westerns. The old westerns, like John Wayne or some of the newer stuff even. Now, I'll just go ahead and throw it out there. If you've seen the new True Grit and you've seen the original True Grit with John Wayne, the new one is, it's the same script, the same deal. Why did you do that? Why in the world? I mean, nobody, nobody's watching this here probably will, uh, will you know, be able to share that with anybody in Hollywood. But, but nevertheless, it's like, th- th- why? Why in the world? What, what, it, uh, you know, John Wayne did a fine job. Glenn Campbell, who was from Delight, Arkansas, which isn't far from where we serve. And uh, he's a big deal down there, but uh, we well, used to be. But anyway, he, you know, so it was, it was it, nothing wrong with it. But, but when you see, you see somebody, you see a couple guns, you know, these guys got, you know, some of them's got two guns, some of them's got them over here. They got them all the different ways they got them. We've, I've only recently seen the Magnificent Seven. I only recently saw, what was the other one we watched? I can't remember. It's Tombstone. I've only seen those recently. They've been out for years. I don't know how I missed them. I kind of, and again, if you don't like movies like that, or if you think it's wrong for me to watch those movies, just scratch that from the record and we'll move on. But, but nevertheless, you see these guys and they got their guns, you're right, you know, in the old west and in Dodge City and Wichita and I mean up through here. I mean, you had those guys that are that are that are either famous or notorious, depending on which side they fell on, right? You know, but they but you know, they're walking down the street and they got their hands out here. But if they're gonna greet somebody they wanted that they that they knew, well they well, they shook hands. Now I heard this and like I say, it makes sense to me. Maybe this is just something somebody said that don't know what they're talking about, but why would you do that? To show that there's nothing in your hands, you're you're not you're not pulling anything. You want to shake their hand, you want to greet them, and you want you know that point of contact, which I love that. But but you know if if we're if we're in a situation you know that that you know like you're on the bad side of it or the good side, you know get your hands up, your hands are open, surrender, and you got your hands up and your hands are open, and you're 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 all these things. So an open hand. Now one of the thoughts when it, when this all started coming together for me, and I want to make sure I articulate this best I can, is an open hand couple things about an open hand number one you're not holding on to anything you've turned whatever it was that you've been holding on to loose you're not holding on and the beauty thing about an open hand is it's ready to receive now spiritually we're ready we're, we're turned loose of whatever it is that that, that, is, that that might be a problem and how many of us know that even sometimes good stuff's a problem the easiest thing i can think of and we watch television i like television i don't have you know like we watch we watch it, and there's, and there's, I'm sure there's probably things that I would watch that you'd be like, I can't believe our pastor watches that. So we're not going to give you a list, but uh, love me anyway. You know, you know, grace, grace is grace. But, but, you know, there's a lot of the time we have a remote control in our hand, and one of the best things we can do is put that thing away. A lot of times we have this in our hand, and a lot of times the only thing people around you see is the top of your head, because you're you're like this the whole entire time. And that's, all, that's one thing, and I look up sometimes in church, and I see some of you with your phone, and I'm, I'm just trusting that you have got your Bible open on your phone, and you're looking at your scriptures, and you're not, you know, and for some reason you're scrolling through when there's nothing to scroll. But anyway, that's, you know, that's between you and Jesus. But, but uh, you know, I, I, the first, when people just first started having cell phones, we were in church service, I think Alton Garrison was preaching, and somebody's phone rang. And he popped up, and he said, if that ain't Jesus, hang up. You know, that's right, you know what I'm saying? So he's so you know a lot of times it's right here. This is in your hand, and what's what's the best, how, what, talking about an empty hand? That's a good empty hand right there. Put that thing down. I use my computer. I use my tablet. I use, of course, you know I do. I, I I'm a technology guy. For a, for a fifty almost fifty two year old person, I'm good with technology. There's almost nothing. I mean all the all of our stuff we're doing with streaming. Um, when this all started, right? There's there's these guys talking about getting their stream set up. And they're buying this big old camera. They're buying this particular other piece of equipment called, a, 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 I think it's a STEM, S-T-E-M. That stands for something. Everything stands for something in this stuff. There's all these letters and all these numbers. And I use OBS, and we use the ISP, and we've got all these things, right? And a lot of people are like, talking foreign language to me. You might as well just go ahead and start talking Greek. Well, I, I, you know, and, and I'm getting pretty good at some of that kind of stuff. And I even bought me a course to study Greek a little more so I can actually do a better job as a pastor teaching some of the deep stuff of the Word. But anyway... These guys are spending, you know, they're spending several thousand dollars to get set up to stream for their church. And they start saying what they're spending and what they're doing. I'm on pastor groups and all this stuff on Facebook. And I'm like, I'm looking at what they're spending. I said, okay, you know, I even asked one time. I put on there, said, all right, tell me your setup and what you spent. And these guys start in, well, this camera, this receiver, this computer, this thing, and all this stuff. And, you know, I said, and, and they put the total down, like $1,500, $2,000, $800. I mean, all these different, and I'm like, that's not in the budget. Now, could we, 
right now because God blessed us with a, a roofing company that made a a wonderful mistake for us. If we needed to spend if we need to spend a couple thousand, we could do it. I mean, I probably wouldn't, but we could. But we didn't need to. Um, God had blessed us with a little bit of a windfall, so Sharon and I bought part of the equipment. The church bought some of the equipment. It's kind of a mutual thing here. We're all in the same together anyway. But when it's all said and done, I bought that camera. We, I got all the stuff hooked up, climbed up in the attic 74, 74 dozen times it felt like. And uh, it's great when you climb up at first because I can stand up. But then when you get up here on top of this, between the roof and this, it's about this much space. And thankfully, I only take up about, it feels like in my mind, about this much space. No, I, don't I don't have that much. But, but when you're crawling, you, and it's, just, it, it's set up pretty good, but it's still, even for a, for a big guy, it's just not wonderful. But, but uh, my favorite thing would, do would be to get up there, and I'd, I'd have my pockets full of stuff, and think, okay, I, I, if I need this. And the, I, had, I had stuff in my pockets I didn't even know I needed. I didn't, that I thought, maybe I might. You know, I, I've got all kinds of stuff. So I'd get up there, and then one day, I'm up here working, and I'm getting the camera set up for, I think it's a Wednesday night, and I had no power. And I've run cords. I've got all this stuff set up there. It's, it's just a whole thing. And like, what in the world? And I, I check the power back here where I plug it in. I had all this stuff figured out. It's like, okay, something's wrong. So I go up and I think, well, I'll find another cord. I hook the other cord in. Turned out the cord had a short in it. My electric cord had a short in it. And when it got cold, if you know anything about how, how electricity works, when it got cold, well, what was warm and wonderful pulled apart a little bit. Well, that's, that was just not, I wasn't happy about that at all. And it took about four trips back and forth to finally figure all that out. And then I get up there and I'm ready to hook stuff up and my cord slipped down through and fell to the floor. The one that I was trying to hook up to the camera. So, so you know, I've had all this stuff going on. But, but at, at any rate, where I'm, where I'm heading with all this kind of stuff is that just the, 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 way, we're, the way we're doing things now, the way things are functioning, we've got to figure out what we need to hold on to and we've got to figure out what to turn loose of. And that's, that's Christian life every day. So an open hand. Open hand is the thought that I want to I dig into here. The open hand is a hand that's ready to receive. And it's a, it's a hand that's also ready to give. And next week we'll talk about an open heart and open hand in, in, in conjunction. Talking about Valentine's Day. Because it actually is Valentine's Day next Sunday, fellas. In case you forgot that, let me help you out. Uh, but um, anyway, the, the, uh, the idea that I want to get across here, and I feel like the Holy Spirit's given me, is just to understand the stuff that we need to put down and have an open hand, put it down. There's nothing this world offers you that's worth missing anything God has for you over, now and in heaven. And at the same time, we need to be ready to have those hands open, ready to receive. Because I'm going to tell you, God's got so much for you, you, hadn't even, you don't even understand. You have no idea what God has to bless you and how God desires to bless you until we get to that place. Because here's the thing. If I go around all the time and my hand's got this and I've got, um, and, and even, even, even I've got this. and here, Hey, I happen to have a remote. That works out pretty good. So I've got this and I've got a fishing pole and I've got a, I've got a gun. I've got a bow. I've got all these things gathered up and pretty soon I, what do I, what I have room for? Nothing. Now, not to, not to throw in something I wasn't prepared for, but I feel like it fits right here. In Hebrews chapter number 12, the, the Hebrew writer said, lay aside. Lay aside that stuff. Lay aside that weight. And be careful about that sin that so easily besets you. I've told you before, I won't tell the story again here because it just, it just it takes too much time. But, but I've told you the story before about when I was first saved and first really giving my heart and life to God back in the, the, the early 90s, I was playing softball. And I was good at it. I, I still, I, and even now, I was not playing as much, as, no more than I played in the last number of years. I could still go out. If there was a team wanting to play, not today, but if they was wanting to play, I'd go out and I'd play with them. I could pitch for them. I could catch. I, I play any position they want me to play. I can hit the ball well still. Last time I hit the ball, I thought, well, this ought to be fun. And I hit one and sailed out, sailed over the fence. So the, the, good, the good part, not behind me, the good part. And it was a good deal. But, you know, I had some skills. But I knew, I knew. Man, I can't be giving my time to all this. And then my good friend, I told you, my good friend Brad told me, said, Jim, you got to, you, you got to, you got to wake up. You got to realize what you're doing. So I put down the softball glove. I put down the bat. I put down the stuff, and put all that stuff away. There's nothing wrong with softball. There's nothing wrong with fishing. Nothing wrong with hunting. Nothing wrong with with shopping. Whatever that kind of stuff. But if those things are taking you out of the place that God wants you to be in your relationship with Him and your relationship with other people, because what's the bottom line of this whole thing? We love God, we love each other. And if I'm so busy with stuff that I don't have time to love God and I don't have time to love you, then that stuff is just stuff. That stuff won't mean anything in heaven.
That stuff won't mean a thing anywhere except for uh, holding you back here from doing the things that you ought to do. So that takes us right into our, our verse today. It's a verse you've heard you know very well, and it's a, it's a powerful verse. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9, one verse, verse number 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to us today. Let me, God, speak a word here to encourage, to edify, to renew, to challenge to convict, Lord, where it's needed, and let your Holy Spirit guide and direct us through it all. And we honor and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so this morning, just, just a couple quick things here that I want to talk about. And I just, just had a, a thought that occurred to me right here. Look at what he says there. I'm, I'm going to bring it back up on screen for the benefit of just trying to, make, trying to get my point across here. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work. Because what what's our hands get caught up doing so much of the time? Work, 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 work. Even if it's something, you know, some hobby or whatever, it becomes work. Device. Now, that's ironic because devices, when, when Solomon wrote that uh, many, many years ago, there weren't devices like we have now. Or knowledge. Now, watch this. I want you to think now, knowledge or wisdom. Now, I'm going to go back here because just having that up on screen might be a little annoying to those that are trying to watch with us online. And I know this isn't much better, but, you know, it is what it is. But just focus in on the jersey, and, and uh, that's fine. But, but knowledge or wisdom in the ground where you're going, where does knowledge come from? Knowledge comes from study, comes from experience, comes from, from taking stuff in. Wisdom comes from knowledge and, and, that not, and the wisdom that, that grows in us with experience and understanding and maturity and all those things that come with that, right? All of that. He says there's none of that in the grave where you're going. So once this body is done, there's no work. There's nothing that you're going to have in your hand, device, otherwise, whatever you're talking about. Modern technology, ancient technology, that doesn't matter. Don't care. Uh, or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going. In other words, you need to get busy right now doing the things that you need to be doing, that you want to matter in this world, that you want to matter to God in the kingdom, and that you want to matter to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to whoever and whatever. Do those things now because if you, if you don't do those things now, once you're gone, it don't make any difference. It doesn't matter. Whether you live, live a ripe old age or whether you die young like folks do, it doesn't matter because once this body has laid down, once these hands have ceased to function the way they function in the world now, there is no point to it. There's nothing else you can do about it. Now, there's some key stuff in that that, I, that really I could get hung up on and stay here a while, but that's not what I, that's not what I came for this morning. But, but I just want you to think about that and understand the open hands idea that I'm wanting to share with you here in these next couple Sundays, today and the, the next two is a mindset of what do I need to put down and at the same time what do I need to pick up what do I need to put down and what do I need to pick up what does God have for me because God has so much more for us than we can ever think or imagine we talk about that a lot uh, you know and we're going to look even here at height depth and principalities and powers here I think tonight but uh, in in the course of our word tonight but but I want, you to, I want you to listen with me and think about it this morning what, I'm, what I've got. Really, I hope my heart comes across because this is powerful. This is an opportunity just to remind us again of what it is that God has blessed us with, what God has blessed us in spite of sometimes, how God has done for us what only God can do. Because that, that distinction is really key. That distinction is really important because as as, as Solomon writes here, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And because once you get to that point, but remember, what's he talking about before that? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. He says, you know what, you're doing this, you're doing that, and you're all these things. And when it comes down to it, what does all that mean? Nothing. It's vanity. Whatever your hand finds to do here, he says, do it with your might. And that's, that's a very, very critical and a very important aspect of who we are as, as Christians. Because if we will get this, if we'll get in our hearts and our minds here, the importance of what we do in relation to the kingdom. Now let's, let me, let me back up. This is in my notes, but I feel like the Holy Spirit just kind of wanted me to, wanted to throw this out here. We are, we, are, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So don't get confused here that I'm telling you that you need to work and do these things so that God will love you. That is not true. That's, that's what the enemy wants you to think. Because if we're so busy doing, 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 sometimes we forget to just worship, forget to love God. Remember the story of Mary and Martha? Sisters, love each other, care about each other. And 
which one was working, which one was, baby, I know you'll know. Because if I said the wrong one, you'd, you'd tell me right now. Martha was working. Mary was worshiping. So Martha, she's in here in her hands. Or, you know, she's found her hands are doing whatever they need to be doing. And she's working, and she's serving, and she's making sure that they're going to have a good meal, and she's making sure they got everything they need. She's cooking, she's cleaning, she's doing, what, doing everything that needs to be done. Jesus, would you do something about this? I'm in here slaving and toiling, working my fingers to the bone. What do you get? Bony fingers. And I'm doing all this stuff. And Mary's sitting out there. She's sitting out there on the couch, kicked back. Tell her to get up. Let's go. He told her, he said, I'm not going to take it from her. She's chosen the better. Martha's doing the necessary Mary's chosen the better. Now here's what I want to show. Here I want to show you in that I feel like I really feel like I'm giving you something good with this. Again, this ain't this is all free. This ain't even my notes. That sometimes it's necessary to work. Sometimes it's necessary to worship. So I could just preach that by itself, and we could go home. But no, I'm not done. That's, that's, that's extra. That's that's bonus stuff right there. But we've got to find that place and make sure that when we need to be working, we're working. And when we need to be worshiping, we're worshiping. And that takes me into part three. We'll get to that in two weeks. But neighbor, I want you to understand something really powerful today because when we, when we start, what, what, are we, what are we talking about? Let me go back again. What are we always talking about? We're talking about love. What I do with my hands shows love. Now, I'm kind of pumped up, and, of course, the weather now has definitely shut me down for because I was ready to go. I was getting ready to go to the store and get some lumber. But I have, I've always enjoyed woodworking and doing stuff and little projects and stuff here and there. And, and I come across the thing, and it's, it's one of those things I come across that, that has, like, I think, I think the, the, advert, the hook line was 16,000 projects. Literally, I've got, I've got in my computer, I've got plans for tons of stuff. And one of the cool things that I, that I like that got me hooked was a folding picnic table. Now, when I say folding picnic table, it doesn't, it, it's, it's a picnic table. If you, if you got it folded out, it's a bench. It folds up. The, the, this one seat comes over and goes against the, the, back, the back, and it becomes a bench instead of a, a picnic table. I'll be taking orders for you. Let me know. But, uh, and I've got some ideas, to do, some cool stuff to do with them. I think it's going to be a pretty neat project. It'll be fun to build, and it'll be, it might be something I can, you know, make a little vacation money off of or whatever. Honestly, I, you know, I'm pretty transparent about stuff like that, but, but, and there's tons of other things I want to make. I've got this cool cabinet that I want to make from a, for the garage and that holds tools and holds chargers and all that kind of cool stuff. But, as you know, the, 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 thing that, the thing that comes back to again, and I was joking, I think I was teasing with Dan about this when I first started talking about doing these things, it's been several weeks together. I've got all my tools pretty well laid out either that for this project, and there's some other stuff I'll need. But anyway, I've got all this stuff laid out, and I said, you know, here's the thing. I start making these folding, this bench picnic table. My wife wants one. My daughter will want one. My son will want at least one. He's got a humongous patio. It's about half the size of this room at his house in Illinois. And, you know, they'll want one. My sister may want one. Of course, my brother-in-law builds stuff. He's, he's, I, I've learned, I've even picked up some stuff from him. I'll just I'll say, here, there's an email with the plans in it for you. But, uh, but you know, this, I, so before I ever actually probably get one and get any money out of one of them, I will have made five or six for people in my life. And what is that? What is it now? now the, the, of course, Dan had a great point. They're talking about wisdom and stuff there. He said, well, by the time you get those made, you'll be good at it. And you'll be able to get and the ones that you sell. People will be like, that's, that's really good solid. You figured out, how to, figured out what not to do. What not to do is go to CJ's house. What, and, and, you know, and the others, you know, we'll, keep, we'll keep the best of that bunch. You know, I'm teasing. But, but, uh, but you know, here's the, here's the thing. Whatever my hand finds to do, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to build that table for my wife, for my daughter, and my son. And what am I actually doing? love i am loving them with that because it's going to be a gift it'll be something i give them yeah I, you know i I've, I've never tried to charge my children for stuff and so i don't think it would work i'm pretty sure that's not going to it would be pointless it'd be worthless i don't if anybody could have you have you managed that yet pete that bunch of yours them boys you ever tried to charge them for any of this stuff you know <laughs> that's his secret you know it's his story sticking to it but but you know when, when, <laughs> what comes around goes around the lord so, so, but you've got, but, but I'm gonna, I want you to stop and think with me here just for a second. When we do stuff like that, little crafts and little knickknacks and little odds and odds and stuff we do for our families, do for our kids, do for our grandkids, whatever it may be, 
what are we doing? We're loving them. We're loving them. I've talked to you about the five love languages. We'll probably come up next Sunday. But, you know, the five love languages where you're doing what you do to show them you love them and you care about them, and it may be what you give them, maybe time you spend with them, it may be, it may be something. I mean, there, there's all these ways that, that, that the five love languages work, and I encourage you, if you've never read the book, you ought to read it. There's several of them, but the, the original book, Five Love Languages, is about marriage relationships. There's the five love languages of God, five love languages of children, of teenagers. He, he's written several really good stuff. But the bottom line, we come back to again, what are we, why are we doing what we do? Love, period. It's about love. If it's not about love, then why bother? It's not about love, then it's about something else, and we don't have time for that. Now, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. So, so when we come back around, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look here with me in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 gives us a really great picture of what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to read, a, I'm gonna read a, a, a good number of verses here, and I'm going to even work toward closing here pretty soon, um, sometime before the game starts at 530. But, but as, we, as we look here at, at what Paul wrote in Romans, now this is a familiar passage. This, this, is, this is not new information for us. As a matter of fact, I used this passage not too long ago. But in Romans chapter 12, starting at verse number 9, I'm going to read this. and I may, I may stop and stutter once in a while, but we're going to, I'm going to try to get through the whole passage and then come back and give you a couple of high points. But he says here, let love, <clears throat> excuse me, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and in, in, sorry, in honor, giving preference to one another. <clears throat> Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. And notice these places where your hands are involved in this. Because if your hands are involved, your heart's probably involved. Okay? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Now there's a message by itself right there. We could preach a while, but we're, we're going to go forward here. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of, hot, uh, coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I'm telling you, open hands are prevalent in what I just read to you. Because I'm, I'm just going to skim down through here and look through it, just go through it with you here as we look at it together. He said, he said, you know what, we're going to be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. We're giving preference to one another. Your hands are going to be involved in that. Uh, your fervent spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing hope, patient in tribulation, continuing in prayer. We saw a deal this week. We got to watching some of these, some of these stupid game shows, and I say it that way with all, with all care and concern. But, but one of the things was, what do you, what do you, when you're doing what do you do with two hands? And I thought it was cool that one of the things that they, that they, they said they do with two hands is pray, that they pray with two hands. And uh, so we're praying. That, that, involve, that, that involves your hands and your heart. So then you go down, and he said, he said we're rejoicing with those who rejoice. We're weeping with those who weep. How, how many times are you, have you ever been successful if somebody's crying that you couldn't just go ahead and at least take a hand, put a hand on them, hug them, do something with them? Your hands are involved in that, right? So praise God. So, so he said, you know what? He said, don't pay, repay evil for evil. And uh, then here you go. Live peacefully with men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. And he goes through all of these things, and all of these things you can find. Now, actually, I, I, I got excited there for a second. I come back to distributing the needs of the saints, giving the hospitality. Those are things you're going to do with your hands. You're going to do what you do to help, to, to, to help them, to guide them, to do for them, and, and whatever you can do. Even if you're writing a check, even if you're using your credit card, you've got your hands involved, praise God. That's what I'm talking about. We're doing what we do for the glory of God and for the blessing and the love that's, that needs to be there for our, for our friend, for our family, even for our enemy. And I want to go back to that just for a second. I don't know that, I don't think this is a church that's got a whole bunch of enemies running around that, that we wish, you know, that we, we would think bad things on. I, that's just not the nature of the people that I have the privilege of pastoring here. But I want you to look at that and think about that right there. Because we are living in a world today that because of politics, because of just stuff, just living in an evil, just honestly living in a world full of evil stuff, that hatefulness, attitudes, bitterness, envy, all those kind of things show up. 
And I don't know that anybody here has an enemy, quote-unquote enemy, but if you do, he shouldn't be. If you have an enemy, you shouldn't have one for long because God tells us we have to forgive. God tells us right here, the Word tells us very plainly that, that he'll take care of business if there's something to take care of. So if, we, if they've got a problem, if they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them a drink and take care of them. And we're overcoming evil with good, with our hands, with our hearts, with our lives. So that again will bring us to another passage of Scripture, Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse number 12. Again, these are familiar, and they should be very familiar to us because these should be the way we're functioning every day anyway. Amen. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. There's your proof right there what I just said. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which one, I'm sorry, to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do, here we go back, this, this, this is reminiscent of what we started, at, started in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have opportunities, and I believe they're God-given opportunities to bless people, to help people, to touch people's lives. And how do we do that? With our hands. Our hands will be involved the majority of the time when we're doing something for God. It's just the way it works. It, it's just, that's just the nature of it because we live in a physical world that has spiritual element, has a mental element, has a financial issue, all that kind of stuff. But all of that, again, you can't compartmentalize. This, this, again, my point that I make all the time goes so well with this. You can't compartmentalize your life. You can't say, well, I'm spiritual here, and I'm not concerned about the physical, the emotional, or even the financial, and I'm going to be emotional here, and I'm not really worried about that. No, it all, it's, all inter, it's, it's all intertwined. You can't, you can't pull out a chunk of your life and say, they're, I'm, trying to, I mean, I'm trying to think just flying off the cuff here. I'm trying to think of a situation where you could have, a, have any issue whatsoever in your life and you not in other aspect, all four aspects of your life. And I say four, again, body, mind, spirit, financial. Because I'll tell you right now, even if you're the one who went to the bank, even if the one you went to the car lot and you signed that paper and you're making that car payment, it's emotional to make that car payment. Because if you've got a car payment like a lot of folks have, then you're looking at that and you're like, man, I could, I could do so much with that. I could buy... Uh, this with that or I could do that with that and but I need a car I need a vehicle to get to work I need a vehicle to do this that and whatever else so you know and then there's then there, there, there's it's all tied together right I'm, I'm just telling you all of your whole life is interrelated and connected and you're not going to be able to separate off and say well this don't really matter here this doesn't matter over here it's you know that's secondary no it's all it's I think it's four equal parts of the same same circumstance because if you don't have money emotionally you're going to be stressed and some people that do have money, watch this. What if the market drops? And I've got my retirement caught up in a 401k. What if, you know, we got, we got truck drivers. We've got a bunch of truck drivers in our church. Thank God for every one of them. But what if the price of diesel goes through the roof like we're afraid might with some of the policies that have been put in? I'm not being political. I'm just telling you the truth. What if, well, for, for just somebody driving a vehicle, driving a pickup truck or a car, if the price of fuel goes up, your expenses, if you're going very far to go to work, you're doing this, doing that, whatever it is, you're about to find out that you've enjoyed some pretty good fuel prices recently, you know, for heating your home. Whether you use natural gas, whether you use propane like we do out where out in the country, whether whatever you use to heat your home, if you use electricity, as those things change, well, all of a sudden, the bottom line in your checkbook is going to change. And, it, you know, it, we can't help it. I can't control that. You can't control that. People well above us control all that kind of stuff. But, again, the emotional of that. Well, I'm doing good right now, but if, boom, all of a sudden I can't sleep at night because I'm thinking about what if. I don't know if you're a what if person or not. I have been. Sometimes I still am. And I'm trying not to be. But faith takes us to that place where we say, you know what, God, you're going to take care of it. You're going to give me opportunities. It may well be 
that if things don't go well, these silly picnic table benches I'm wanting to sell, that may carry us through the summer or the winter or keep food on the table. Uh, because, you know, and there's, like I said, I've got tons of other things I want to make, chests, drawers, all kinds of cool stuff that I, that I have. I have the skill to make, and I, have the, and I just, need to, just need to get down to it and do it because I know how to do stuff like that. I, just, I haven't done a lot of it, but I've done enough where I know how to do it. I had a great shop teacher in high school that taught me things that I really never thought I'd use, but now I'm, I'm about to find out exactly how cool it is. But um, it, it's a neat thing. It's, it's something about giving. I'm, I've got some toys I want to make for my grandkids, and they're not going to be anything special to anybody. No, somebody else looking at something, that's a big deal. But I'm hoping that 30 years from now, if the Lord tarries, my granddaughter has got sitting up on her shelf. Papa made this for me. Why did I make it? Because I love her. What are your hands doing? Loving, caring, working, ministering, touching, healing, whatever it may be. Praise God. We've got nurses in our church. I can talk about that forever. Probably will in, the, in the context of love next week, I'll talk about that aspect of it. But I, I'm just telling you something this morning in closing. We have, we have so much that we can do. Watch out now that we can do there's an awful lot of things that we're not doing as a church as individuals as families what can we do what are we going to do with our hands and I, the challenge i feel like god has for us in this is exactly that you know paul i believe it's paul that talks about walk circumspectly pay attention if there's somebody around you that needs something do it for them i've spoken to, to our to our deacons this morning the, the ones that i had there early and I, and I'll, I'll, I'll Jake, catch me before we leave. I need to visit with you just a second. But there is a family in our community, a family that's in need. I'm well aware of what their need is, and, I, and, I, I, and we're going to help them because we can. And we're going to do it because it's the right thing to do, and it's just a blessing. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. It's not a gesture. It's not what it, it is. It is giving them what God has blessed us with. And that's what else is there? What else can you do? We love people. We care for people. So that takes us now. This, this is the lead into next Sunday, honestly. Psalm 18, in my closing passage today. Psalm 18, 20 through 24. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. <clears throat> Excuse me, for I have kept the way of the Lord and have not departed, not, have, not, I'm sorry, not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I also was blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Now, let me give you a little background on this, what I just read to you, because this is important. This is a psalm David wrote after he finally got to a place of peace in a manner of speaking with Saul, with King Saul. Now, remember King Saul. King Saul was hunting David. How did that start? I'm going to give you the quick version of the story, because I already said I was closing, and it's not nice to say you're closing and then not close fairly soon after that. I know that's true. Now, I don't do it very well, but I know it's true. Okay? Knowing and doing, you know, it's, it's, that's a sermon by itself. But in all seriousness, and I think this is important, just to give you the background of where, why, why he says the things he says. Because in another place, David also says, my righteousness is like filthy rags. Now, is that a contradiction? No. Watch this. David was being hunted, literally hunted by King Saul. There were two separate occasions where David had Saul's life in his hands. Talking about hands. David had it right there. David could have killed Saul twice. Short version of the story. I won't go into the details of how it all transpired, how it went down. But David could have killed Saul himself by his own hand twice. And David didn't. After all that's said and done, and Saul stops hunting David. Now I encourage you to read the whole passage. Starting verse number 1 in Psalm 18 later. Look at it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this is, the, this is what David wrote after Saul finally stopped hunting him. Okay? He's got peace with Saul. He's not worried about Saul trying to track him down anymore, and it's not, it's not a problem. So what Paul sa- or excuse me, Paul, what David says here, when he says, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. This is not puffed up. This is not David saying, hey, look at me, I'm perfect. Ain't I great? No, this is David saying, in context, Context is, is key. Don't ever lose sight of context in Scripture. If we start, and I, I have a hard time with this. There's books I read sometimes, and somebody will take one little verse out, and they're like, and it says this, and then they start talking about it. I'm like, that's not what that says. The whole picture matters. So David here has, has been tested. David has been tried. David has been put in a situation where he could have killed King Saul twice. Now, remember what David said why he didn't do it? I'll not touch God's anointed. Saul, even though Saul had made decisions and choices, 
Again, you study this out. I'll give, you, I'll give you passages later if you want to know them. You probably know them already. But in the Old Testament, King Saul, first king of Israel, he was doing good. He got anointed king. All that was on the level. But then King Saul made some bad choices, done some things he had no business doing, and the Spirit of God left him. And when there was a spirit from God there, it was a troubling spirit. David didn't minister to him through all that, played music for him and all that kind of stuff. Nevertheless, go on, we move forward to this point. King Saul has had two occasions where he was hunting David, and David had two occasions where David had his life in his hands. He could have killed him right there on the spot, and nobody could have stopped him. After it's all said and done, David says, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, in relation to Saul. He's recompensed me. In, re in relation to Saul. He said, I kept the ways of the Lord, not departed wickedly from my God. In relation to Saul. He was put with a challenge. He had temptation right in front of him, and he, and he stood the test. That's what he's talking about. So don't be confused here of thinking, well, David had all the answers. He had it all figured out. So why did David do what he did? Verse 22, his judgments were before me, and I didn't put away his statutes from me. I will not touch God's anointed, David said. I was blameless for before him. I didn't touch him. I didn't do these things. So when he comes down to it, what do he say? Verse 24, this is key. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness, 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 I want to get cleanliness, that's not the word, cleanness of my hands in his sight, in God's sight. To be clear, David was a sinner. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. We struggle. We have issues. We have circumstances. We put ourselves in circumstances. Come on now, I'm, I, I, I guess I'm the only one. That's not a place to shout anyway, I guess. But regardless of that, you know, here, here we come back to it. Can we in situations be able to confess as David, the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness? Well, I'll tell you this in closing. This time I'm serious about it. Our righteousness compared to David's is different. David's righteousness was in what he it wasn't what he did and what he didn't do. It wasn't the way that he dealt with God. It wasn't what the high priest did because David lives under the, age, under the age of the Old Testament sacrifice system. But we live in a place where our righteousness is Christ's righteousness. I am cleansed and purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I do not. I do not have the situation that David had. I have a situation that's much different. And I'll, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, I think it's better. Because God loves me, and if I'm in Christ, his righteousness is on my life. And when God looks at me, he sees the righteousness of Christ in my life. And if I, if I fail, if I struggle, if I'm tempted, if I run into a situation, if I have a situation like David where I'd like to do some business that, that, uh, that, maybe, I, that maybe if I thought about it, I wouldn't do because that's not what God would have me do, in that moment, the righteousness of Christ should draw me back to that place in my connection to him that says, I'm not doing that because that's not what Jesus would do. Remember in the, the late the, the 90s, the late 90s, everybody had the little bracelets. WWJD, what would Jesus do? That's cool. I love that. I still love that. I, 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 I may have one at the house, but I, I, I don't, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to dig for it out of some old stuff out of my desk drawers that I, that I had never unpacked. But, but I'm telling you something. We've got to get that heart and that mentality. What would Jesus do? Jesus would do what needs to be done with his hands, with his heart, with his mind, with his finances, with every part of him. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get across here. And I hope I've articulated the way I want to what I'm trying to say. Because, friends, we've got, I think if we get this kind of simple stuff in our hearts, in our heads, in our lives, in our checkbook, in the way we function, how we operate, to where we do what we do, plain and simple, I think this is a great place to close with it, what Jesus would do. If he would do it, let's do it with all our might. If he wouldn't do it, let's run from it like it's a bear trying to get us. I'm telling you, folks, we have so much opportunity in front of us, so much opportunity in front of us to do incredible things. As I said, next week we're going to talk about open hearts, open hands slash open hearts, but to be in Christ is to have open hands. I like one young lady, she's, uh, I think it was Bob Caldwell's daughter, Brother Dean, which you've met. I'm trying to remember, I can't remember her first name. It's been so long ago when I was youth pastor in the 90s, but we were in, at youth camp. And I, and it's, it's, it's like, if you've seen, seen Brother Dean, you've seen these kids, because they're all the Caldwells are the Caldwells. 
and you've seen Brother Dean, most of you have anyway. <clears throat> but country, sweet, wonderful people, love God, and they're just, they're, we're all, it's just, it's a, it's a, such a blessing, it's such a blessing to, to be, to know that family. But this young lady, she's, we're in the altars one night after church, and, and in the altars after church, we're always, there's always something gets stirred up, and Brother Dane usually was one that started up, but, and you'll meet Brother Dane, I'm going to have him come preach for us too, he's, he's, uh, he's kind of on the road these days and just preaching out, but, but Brother Dane, he'd get us started singing um, a couple of old songs, we had one, he's got in the, he's got in the Father, he's got in the Son, God in the Holy Ghost, God all three in one, I know God is God. God don't ever change, I know God is God, and he always will be God. And we start singing that, and I'm talking, you got 500 teenagers just losing their minds, raising hands, jumping around, dancing, shouting. And I'm standing by this girl, I wish I could remember her first name, it's terrible, I can't, that's awful, I feel bad, I can't. But she's standing there, and she's got one hand up, she's got one hand like this. <laughs> and I said, you got to know these kids, and I, I'm a curious person by nature. And I was like, girl, what are you doing? She says, this one's for blessing, and this one's for receiving. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. I'll, come on, girl. Bless my soul. Yeah, so if you ever catch me doing that, I've done it before. You may not ever notice it, but I will once in a while. I'm like, I'm like, sure I got, this one's for blessing, this one's for receiving. Come on now. Oh, I like it. Open hands. Open hands, church. You'll hear that again in the next couple weeks, I can tell you, because it's just right there. I'm telling you, God's good. Ah, you see, we hadn't said that in a long time. Y'all right there on time, I'm telling you. He is. He loves us so much. It's so incredible. And I want to challenge you. Open your hands. Open your heart. Open your life. Fresh and new today. Fresh heart. Fresh mindset. Fresh mentality. And let's do something for God that we've never done before. Let's do something for God we've done before and it mattered. Either way. But I'm thankful this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, will you bless us? God, use us. Use Calvary Temple. Use our hearts, our lives, and our hands to make a difference in this world. Or there's a world around us that's hurting. They're hurting financially. They're hurting emotionally. They're hurting physically. They're hurting, hurting Lord God spiritually. And Lord, we have something that they need. And it may involve our hands. It may involve our hearts. It may involve our checkbook. It may involve uh, lots of things. But at the end of the day, Lord God, we have what they need. I know that. And I ask you, Lord God, to use us to bring glory and honor to your name. Touch hearts and lives through the, through the word. And let us, Lord God, be ever mindful of who we are in you what you have for us and we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it in Jesus name hallelujah heads bowed please eyes closed here in the room do you know Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior if you do not or maybe your relationship with him is not where you want it to be and you know today that you need to get things right between you and him I want to give you that opportunity right now to just stop for a minute and say Lord forgive me and renew me bless me or Lord come into my life for the very first time whatever be the case for you you this morning do you need Jesus in your life do you need to ask him into your heart or to rededicate your life to him today anybody and as I've been doing online for those that are online because I don't have any way of seeing that you have right you know that you could respond but I want to give you this opportunity and you may see this months from now on YouTube or somebody may share this with you so I just want to give you this opportunity and just ask you if you need Jesus in your heart and life this morning I want to ask you to repeat this prayer after me today and ask Jesus into your life and into your heart and to begin that relationship with him. If you're ready to do that, would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, forgive my sin. Be the Lord of my life. Help me to use my hands to bring glory and honor to you and to love my neighbor. Touch my heart. Touch my life. Bless me, Lord, and I'm thankful that you gave your life for me so that I can have life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible tells us if we prayed that prayer, that we have confessed with the mouth according to Romans and we are saved. If you prayed that prayer, I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. Send me an email to ctagpastor at gmail.com. Go to the CTAG Hiawatha website, and there's a place there you can contact me as well and be able to send me a message and let me know that you did that. It would bless me so much to hear, hear from you that you made a decision today and that you give Jesus Christ your heart and your life. So uh, thank you for joining us online. Thank you for being here in, the, in person in the house. And uh, trust and pray that you'll be safe and blessed to get home safely. And uh, take your time. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a rush. And let's get home safe today and be well and blessed as we go. And uh, I will say right here that, uh, that Loretta Lee, thank you for, for spending time with us today. Craig, thank you for spending time with us today. Well, we look forward to the day when we can all be back together in the house and to spend time together once again. And happy birthday to Craig. 
Hope you got cards from us this week, and uh, we blessed you that way as well. Stand with me this morning as we look at our final verse that we look at, and this has been our regular verse now for a number of months, thanks to Loretta Lee uh, that encouraged me with this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And in light of today, help you keep it between the ditches. Praise God. Father, bless and be with us as we go our way. Keep us safe and well, Lord God. Help us to get home safely. And Father God, be with us if we do have to get out. Keep us safe. Bless our first responders, our policemen, our ambulance drivers, firefighters, and truck drivers as they'll have to get out in this to, to get their jobs done. Lord, we speak your blessing over us. And Lord, should we go to school tomorrow in the area, we pray that you'll bless buses and bus drivers to get, to get kids uh, to and from school safely and well and uh, that all will go well by your plan and by your love, grace, and mercy. And we thank you for it. We honor you for it today and give you the glory in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a happy afternoon. I'll see you tonight at about probably 6.45 or 7 at halftime. Yes, sir.